been a busy couple of weeks since the last time I saw you guys in Indy. Obviously, we had some tough decisions, uh, free agency. Um, feel good, you know, what we accomplished in free agency. Picked our spots. We're able to retain, you know, a few of our own. And, and free agency is a work in progress. We're still working through it. It's a process. We have flexibility to do, you know, still do some things. I, I think, you know, you can plan on, you know, us doing that. And then, uh, you know, we're focused on the draft. You know, we've been hitting pro days. It's been good to get out and see these players in person. Um, we'll do that more this week after we leave here, leave here tomorrow. And then uh, next week, you know, we start our draft meetings. And then it's, shoot, the draft will, will be here before you know it. We look forward to the draft. Eight picks, picking 12. Uh, we're excited, you know, uh, for what's ahead. But that will take your questions. You, you mentioned the, the miss rate on, on quarterbacks in the first round and just how it can be difficult. I mean, what, what does it take from a, a conviction standpoint in terms of, you know, finding a guy that you believe in to take him or even, you know, if you're moving up in that scenario? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, the tape. You know, you watch the tape. Does he fit what you're doing? Do you have a clear vision uh, for this player moving forward? And then just, you know, being around the player as much as you can. You know, obviously the talent comes into play, um, the scheme. And then just trying to get around these players, get to know these players. That's what we've been trying to do uh, with our scouts in the fall, in the summer. Um, you know, I get you know in the fall, towards the end of the fall, I'll get more involved in that. You know, Senior Bowl, All Star Games, Combine. You know, all these steps are different steps where you get to know these players, you know, whether it's quarterback or left tackles. And so that's what we're doing. Um, it's a race for information right now. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. That's why it's hard to come here. You know. The anxiety, but uh, it's a race for information. We're all trying to gather it and uh, try to make the best possible decision. Speaking how, of how when, when it comes to the first round, like, yeah. whether you're trading up or trading down, um, when do those conversations really begin to happen about moving around? Oh, you talk about them. Sean and I talk every day, multiple times a day, just about everything. And um, but probably not serious until we get into draft meetings, you know. And you kind of get a, you know, I've talked to most of the teams ahead of us. I've talked to a lot of teams behind us. I kind of know who's. It is a little early, but I know who's willing to move. You, you kind of know the teams that are typically willing to move. And so um, you always want to have a, you know, to know how much it is to move up and then same how much you get if you move back. So we'll have a good lay of the land by the time we get, you know, two weeks ahead of the draft. George, Sean sure. mentioned that it was a hard decision to release Justin Simmons. Yeah. Can you kind of go into your perspective of, of that and, and, and ultimately why there wasn't maybe able to be a trade for that or, or how that all Yeah, I mean, that's the hardest part of the job is uh, you have a player like Justin, uh, and we've lost some really good players, you know, Josie Jewell, those type of players, but um, they become, these. they're more than players to us, they're, they're family, you get to know them. Um, Justin was one of the reasons I want to take this job, players like Justin, uh, I think that was my first extension. And so, um, you know, it, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, we didn't just, uh, this took a lot of time to discuss, you know, just going through the, the or why we're going to do it. and. Um, we just want to wish them the best. So these these are hard decisions. We don't take them lightly. I'm not going to get into why we did it, um, how we could have handled it differently. You know, I think we want to do right by Justin, and I felt we did that. Um, you know, re releasing them early to get on the market, but uh, no, it's the toughest part of the job. What went into the decision to take the bigger hit of dead money on Russell Wilson this year rather than? Last year? Yeah, we there was three different scenarios. We felt this one gave us some, the most flexibility. Uh, to be competitive and win now and in the future. And so as we weighed all three, and, and uh, so that's why we, we did that move. George, um, Sean talked about the pride workout you had with J.J. McCarthy. How did that go from your estimation? You know, I don't want to get into the workouts, guys. Okay. You know, um, I'm glad Sean uh, told everyone, but um, <laughs> yeah, he's a very nice young man. And uh, no, we, we've done privates with other players, other positions, and uh, no, had a good visit. I know it's only one little thing, but he said gave him more information than you should give anyone in that amount of time. When a not JJ specifically, when a player, I guess, excels at that, how much can that maybe tip the scales? Certainly doesn't hurt. You know, you're going there. You, you, it's a test for that player, and uh, and and you know, if they get an A, obviously it's going to help them. If they get a B, you know, and then if obviously if they fail, it's not going. You know, so it's it's a big deal when you spend that much time with the player. And um, not only you watch them throw, but you you know put them through a test and and just see how they come through. And so it can really help. Yeah. George, how much of the draft process is about challenging your own beliefs and convictions, and how do you go about you know orchestrating an environment where you where you do that in order to kind of keep pushing, you know, kind of pushing each other? Yeah. Well, you're always looking to evolve. 
you know, you don't, you don't want to stay stagnant. And um, that's why it was kind of cool to have Sean come in with his new ideas. We discussed our thoughts, philosophies, draft, what have you. And so um, he brought a lot of good ideas to the table. We, we both evolved. We kind of merged. And then, you know, you bring in new coaches. You bring in a guy like Cody Rager who can help and help the process. And I think every year after the draft, you know, you should, you should look in the mirror and see how we can improve. And, and so we do that every year. But that was one of the reasons we wanted to bring in Cody, you know, to get some new ideas, um, a different lens, you know. And so um, I don't know if that answered your question. With, with Jones and Roach in particular, what did you like about those two players? Yeah, Brandon Jones, uh, I've always liked the player. I like the makeup. Um, you know, he can play high and low. Uh, he's got, he has good range. If you watch, like, the, the 21 tape, you watched how, you know, Flores used him as a blitzer. This guy is, is a really good blitzer. I think he had five sacks. Thought he was playing an elite level before he tore the ACL in, in, in 22. And then it was good to see him come back in Miami. But I like the range. I like the toughness. Um, and I like his ability to blitz. And, and uh, I think it's a, a good piece for Vance. And he'll pair with Locke and Skinner and some of those other guys. And so, um, and then Roach. You know, Roach is just a physical. He's violent at the point of attack. Uh, you know, he can play multiple positions. He's really going to help our run game. I talked about that, you know, at the combine. We need to, we need to help our run game. So I think he does that, and uh, you know, he's got great makeup as well. How Jim would you Jarrett respond to every, every snap? I think yeah, this this past year at left tackle, coming off the yeah. broken leg in twenty two. Where is he? Obviously, he's now going into the last year. I think yeah. of his deal. Where is he at? I guess as a player, and where do you see the future? I think he had a good season. I think he played well. Um, obviously, there's always things you can improve on, and uh, but shoot, Garrett. I think he's 31, 32. He still moves like he's 25. And you know, I thought he had a good year. And, and, but obviously, there's things he can improve on. Um, you know, he's still learning some of the techniques of Streep and those guys. But I really thought he played well. How would you, George, uh, respond to those who would say that it's a rebuilding year 2024 for the Broncos? Yeah, we don't look at it like that. I think Sean said retool. I mean, we're excited, you know, for the challenge. And other teams have been through this. They've come out ahead. Um, you know, we want to build. We want to build the right way for sustained success. And and so we plan on doing that. We're excited for the challenge. George, uh, you know, after the rust, the whole rust yeah. thing, you know, everything you gave up to get him. Yeah. The contract didn't work out two years later, and now and a lot of that is kind of falling on you as the guy who made the decision. What yeah. Is, what do you say? Yeah, Mike, we took a shot on a, a quarterback who had had a lot of success in this league. Uh, I don't know, nine Pro Bowls, won the most games first 10 years in the league. and. And it wasn't just Russ. I mean, there's a lot of contributing factors uh, to why we didn't win. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't play good enough offense. We didn't win enough games. I'm accountable for that. And, um, and so I'll just leave it at that. You know, Russ, no one tried harder than Russ to make this work. I appreciate the effort, uh, the professionalism he showed. Um, man, total pro. I wish him the best in Pittsburgh. He's going to a good team and just wish him the best. Specific to the quarterback position, in the draft process, kind of what have you learned about what traits can be really well evaluated and which ones there's a little bit more of a hazy? Yeah, I mean, you can you can evaluate the talent. You can evaluate the arm strength, the feet, the athletic ability, the mobility, um, by second chances, off schedule, all that stuff you see on tape. It's, it's the ability to process, you know, um, which we've talked about, you know, process a lot of information in a short time and make the best decisions. That's the thing we're all searching for. I think we're also searching for um, the it factor. You know, who can raise the, the level of his teammates? And, and, and that's really hard to find. And sometimes you don't know it until you have it. And, um, and so that's what we're all searching for. What you saw the just sort of the market for quarterbacks that are going into situations either where maybe they're, they have a chance to start or they're to be a backup. Do you think the cost there, I mean, is that part of the cap going up or is yeah. it how much backups ended up being, you know, needed last year. Around I think it's probably a little bit of both, probably more of the cap going up, I, I would assume. Um, it's all relative. You know, the cap goes up, everyone's happy, but you're spending more for players. And so, yeah, the backup quarterback market, you know, was elevated. And that's just, that's part of free agency. And, uh, you know, I don't, were you, you want another question there? Well, just how, I mean, how seriously did you yeah, sort of, so, were, were you involved in that market? <laughs> we were involved. We, were, yeah. we talked about all these quarterbacks. Um, some just weren't great fits for what we're trying to do. We didn't just want to add one to add one, and then you, you know then you multiply your problem. But there were some quarterbacks we liked; it just didn't work out, and that's that's part of free agency. We've looked at the trade market. We're still in the quarterback market. Uh, we like Stiddy, and uh, but we're going to add, and uh, but we're not panicked. You know, we don't play a game for a while, and, and we feel like we'll add a, a vet, and and we'll see about the draft.
George, when, Two you more at, for George. when you look at the draft here with a lot of quarterbacks that people seem to like, but a lot of quarterback needy teams kind of, you know, certainly one to at least 13. Yeah. How much of a challenge does that make the idea of maneuvering if there's a guy that you really hope to get? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you look at it all, you know, you, you just don't want to panic. And I mean, obviously you have a, uh, you know what everyone's in front of you, right behind you. If there's a player you you love, you know, Sean talked about being in love with the player, and then you do, you do whatever it takes to go get him, you know. But um, you don't want to panic. You, you know, there's going to be a really good player at 12, and uh, unless we have a total consensus love for another player, you know, we just stay at 12 or we move back. George, Looks like a couple of your top 30 yeah. visits. Go ahead. I'm we'll do Cecil Van Zack. Okay. Uh, looks like a couple of your top 30 visits are inside linebackers. What are you looking for at that position specifically? We're looking for uh, you know more depth to compete. You know we have obviously with Alex Singleton, we signed Cody, uh, Barton, uh, Justin Sternod. Um, I'm, I'm missing uh, Jonas. Jonas. So we, we like the competition. We just want to bring in competition. Um, you know we like to get a little more athletic at the linebacker position for you know coverage range. We feel like we have that with our group. Um, but you're always looking for young depth uh, there, someone to compete, John, certainly, and play special teams. That's huge, you know. I'm sorry, Sean talked about your guys' relationship yeah. over, the, over this past year. How has it evolved and where is it at now? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, Sean, uh, Sean and I have a really good relationship. We talk, I don't know how many times a day. But during the season, it's a little, <laughs> a little more crushing. You know, he's a little more uh, salty, I would say. <laughs> um, this is his time of year. He loves, he loves the player acquisition process, free agency, um, draft. Uh, he's into it, his coaches are into it, it's very collaborative. Uh, it's easy, uh, nothing's easy, but it's easier to scout um, for Sean because his attention to detail, he knows exactly what he wants at each position and his coach, coaches follow suit. And so it's easier for our scouts, um, you know, to go to a school and say, man, that, that, you know, that's a Denver Bronco type player. And so look forward to having another uh, quality draft with Sean. Uh, we've been on the road. It's it's always fun, um, as you could probably imagine. And uh, so the relation, I you know, have a great relationship with him. Thank you very much, George. Thanks, guys.